Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and our little pullback here on Coin Paprika. Let me do a refresh. Looks like it's getting uh, a little more pullbacky. Look, see, look, now this is where I start getting interested in buying dips. CeeLo, which has done well over the last few days, has dipped minus 10.4% uh, 10, 10 now in the last 24 hours. This is when I, I start to perk up. I like IOTA too. Um, that's what I'm looking at right now. now Link to, um, whose link is in the top of this description, you, you have to always use the link, by the way. Um, but they're in the, they've spotlighted this company, and I don't think I've ever shown you this. It's one of the cooler companies on the Link2 platform. It's called Zipline. They're, I think they're like the only commercial drone company in the world, or one of the only. Watch this. I want you to see this. This is cool. My name is Keenan Weirbeck. I'm co-founder and head of product and engineering here at Zipline. We run the most advanced drone delivery service in the world. Zipline is dedicated to helping doctors save lives even in the hardest to reach places. Our planes crisscross the skies every day delivering critical and life-saving medicine to people in need. With so many flights flying every day over both populated and unpopulated areas, we've put a lot of work into building safety features into everything we do. In our operations, for example, we use cutting edge technology like computer vision in each pre-flight check to make sure that plane is ready to fly its life-saving mission. Wow, it doesn't get any cooler than that. We're literally looking at the future. So that one's on the Link2 platform. Now, let me tell you what, folks, I've been watching the news and all of this for a long time. And this thing right here, and this doesn't have anything to do with politics for me. This is pure staged drama right here. We, Nancy Pelosi, who is our inside, inner, insider trading congresswoman, she, and again, that's not political for me either. I don't care if you're a Republican, Libertarian, Democrat, or whatever. If you're trading on insider information because the public sent you to be there in office, you need to be in jail. Nowhere else but jail. And your husband if he's involved too. But that's not what we're talking about here. What I'm talking about here is this, this uh, Nancy Pelosi in the middle of all this tension between China and Taiwan and all of this, she just has to go over there to Taiwan. She just It's got to be right now. Even though there's all these Chinas ramping up their military and all that. Folks, let me tell you what. This might be the most staged media event I've ever seen in my life. I mean, folks, my gut is screaming. I've got gut sirens going off right now. This is like a world on the verge of World War III event. Now, um, I also had tweeted this out. The only way this clown show could get any worse is if we got World War III over this insider trading whack job. And again, that's not a political statement either. This woman's lunatic crazy, and it doesn't have anything to do with what party she's in either. She's just straight crazy, and you don't have to watch much to figure that out. I've seen video clips online of her, and you can't even make out what she's saying, almost like, almost like she has lost her mind or something. Um, but again, that's not my point here. I have to put this in the All the World's a Stage file. But then Mr. Intuitive said something and reminded me of something. He says, I believe the son of the official father of the Digital Asset Investor channel said that the, these assets were created to prevent World War III must be close. It wasn't anybody that I'm related to, but somebody did, somebody did tell me two or three years ago now that, this, that XRP was, cre prevented to, was created to prevent World War III and that more or less all the world is stage. Now, that doesn't mean it is. I don't know for sure. Okay, now look, this chart is interesting because it shows you the inception of XR, Ripple and XRP and all of that. And you can see when you look at this, it's no coincidence that XRP has kept, I mean, there's no digital asset 
besides the two, Bitcoin and Ethereum, who have been a, given a regulatory free pass, there is no other digital asset that has consistently kept itself up in the top. Okay, what's interesting to look at is this: is this the rankings of these digital assets across all of these years, and what was going on in our timeline? For instance, well, first thing you need to know is because we I showed it in the video the other day. J.P. Morgan was working with Ethereum starting in two, around here, 2014-15. Okay. Bitcoin and, and the thing that they never show here on this chart is before, like I think it was in 16 or 17. I think it was in 16. But no, it was it was as close as 18. XRP made a move and, and was ahead of Ethereum even in 2018. When, when XRP hit its all-time high, it made a move above Ethereum. Now, 2015 is when Katie Hahn sues uh, the Justice Department goes after Ripple, okay? And of course, so so that was there, and I'm sure that was a coincidence that JP Morgan gets involved right in here, and then Katie Hahn is going after Ripple right here. There's multiple lawsuits, and you can see them in my timeline. There's a lawsuit that dropped September 8th, 2017 against Ripple. Meanwhile, um, all in here, it, Ripple's getting hit with all kinds of stuff. Katie Hahn is here in the front row of, J of Jay Clayton's speech, and it's the next day that Jay Clayton gets with Chris Dixon, and they put together the, the, the venture capital working group that will eventually get Ethereum the free pass that it needs and wants, right? Um, then, But you can see right in here, 2017, um, this is, when, this is when, when Ethereum got that Hinman speech is when it finally was able to in a strong way hold its position and then here comes the lawsuit SEC lawsuit right here and ever since then XRP drops almost like you had a concerted effort by a lot of people in this whole thing folks makes you wonder doesn't it now CZ Binance who I like CZ Binance I think he's one of the good guys we need less divide in the world more building and I think he's referencing crypto but I said to him the divide in crypto is because of regulatory capture, which was coordinated with the SEC and many crypto quote leaders. The divide will remain without a level playing field. We didn't start it, but we will see it through until the right thing is done. And that's the fact, Jack. Now, Vitalik, let me, I wanted to show you this because this is the state of, of crypto. This cannot stand, folks. It cannot stand because as, as crypto stands, we are living under this lie that was created through regulatory capture that Bitcoin and Ethereum are somehow superior and they're somehow more decentralized than everything else. It's a lie. It's always been a lie. But the, because of the lie, this is, what the, this is what the people, the investors, and everybody in crypto thinks of what's gone on. You got Vitalik Buterin who has the gall to call out scammers. Then look at his, when he calls them out, look at his what happens in, in his feed because everybody knows this whole Ethereum theme, thing has been a sham. You got Stefan Huber, he drops this. Then you got the meme guy and he drops this. You got Joseph Lubin, Bill Hinman, and then you'll notice that Vitalik Buterin, he'll reply to some of these people that aren't sh pointing to what went down. He'll, he'll reply to them, but he never replies. They can't reply to the ETH gate. They can't reply to it because they know what happened. And as you go down further, it's all ETHgate, ETHgate. They've got clips of video. Ethereum's a scam. It's a long con. This is the state of crypto. This cannot stand, folks. We can't proceed forward and have this, this fake free pass for Bitcoin and Ethereum that's going on because nobody's going to trust it. you got Joseph Lubin running around calling, oh, this is a new trustless foundation. Well, the whole foundation is built on lies, and, and we've exposed it, and it's a fact. This stuff, they haven't, we've gone over a year showing their video, their own words. They have not come out one time to refute any of the facts. As John Deaton says, the facts are not in dispute because they can't dispute them, folks. Half these people are attorneys, but they can't say anything because they thought that we weren't going to put it all together. It's their own words that created this timeline. All of the facts 
are put together from their own words. They were just too arrogant not to say the words. They didn't think anybody would be paying attention. Then there's this from XRP Crypto. Ripple Partner Bank of America says Ethereum needs scalability improvements to hold its market position. Well, yes, but it also needs Gary Gensler to continue its fake free pass to prevent the level playing field to hold its market position. The second you have a level playing field with XRP or Cardano and all these others that actually work with Ethereum and Bitcoin, game's over, party's over for Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's why they had to do the regulatory capture in the first place because they know this. Now, moving along, um, I think I'm gonna skip this video. They're just talking about what's going on with Voyager and Celsius. Um, people, they're, basically, they're talking about how a lot of those things are gonna be tied up in bankruptcy pr proceedings and all those people that had their stuff on those platforms could be out of luck for a while. Now, I don't think this looks very good for Hester Pierce at all. This is from, um, this is from uh, Stefan Huber. This is um, December 2nd. This is about just a uh, 10 or 10 plus days away from the lawsuit being dropped on Ripple that Hester Pierce would have known about and she thought that it was a good look to do this. Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. We, really, we are really fortunate to have SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce and this guy kick us off today in depth's discussion on digital assets, da 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 da. Then there's this. If you haven't yet noticed, crypto has gone mainstream. This is two days later. Appropriate regulation to spur innovation and growth is paramount. Read what Hester Pierce and the SEC are doing to enable builders in the space. She has to know at this point that they're about to sue Ripple, folks. She has to. And that's the uh, video of the thing. That's a great find. And I said here, not a good look with what we now know, Hester Pierce. I think it's about time to abandon all hope of anything good coming good at the SEC. I'm betting dimes to donuts on uh, Commissioner Pham at the CFTC. That's my crypto mom. Bitcoin stablecoins worst options for cross-border payments, ECB study says. Look at this. We tried to tell you the holy grail of cross-border payments is a solution allowing cross-border payments to be immediate, cheap, universal, settled and secure settlement medium, said the study, which was co-authored by Ulrich Binsell, the ECB's Director of General Marketing. Bitcoin is least credible of the visions to achieve that, the report continued, and stable coins, crypto assets that seek to tie their value to other assets such as fiat currencies come in a close second given concerns over their market power. The report says a Bitcoin-based system wouldn't work because of its inherently inefficient proof-of-work consensus mechanism, the widespread use for criminal purposes, and the volatility of the asset. It also described the fervor of the cryptocurrency supporters as quasi-religious. And I believe my, uh, Michael Saylor said that, um, that other digital assets um, had a sort of, they, they had a religion. No, I said it the other day, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they have to have a religion because proof of work doesn't work. That's the problem. Check this out. Just a reminder, hackers drained nearly 200 million from crypto startup and free for all attack. They yanked almost 200 million in crypto from Nomad, a so-called blockchain bridge. Folks, top of the description of this video, I use a Ledger Nano S, go get one. They're only like 40 or I think they're 50 to 60 bucks, something like that. But go get one, put your crypto on it. For the time being at least, folks, don't get involved in all this DeFi and staking stuff. It's too spooky. There's too many things that have gone wrong, in my opinion. That's my opinion. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family to go get a freaking Ledger Nano S. Enough of all this business.